In today's video, we're talking about black bars and the power of changing aspect ratios. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys. Now, if you're into filmmaking or editing, consider subscribing to the channel because we've got a ton of tutorials all around that subject. Now, if you saw our last video, which was all about how to get black bars in your footage the right way, you'll love this little video update. When we put that video out, we got a really nice message from our friend Dan over at Dreamlinks AFM, who said that actually in some scenarios, you may need to use PNG black bars if you wanna change the aspect ratio during a film. So you may notice this in films like Transformers, and what happens when you get to an action sequence or a fight sequence, the black bars will actually creep in and the aspect ratios Will change. So we thought we'd invite Dan onto the channel to talk more to you about this. So welcome to the channel, Dan. Thanks for joining us. And can you explain a little bit more about this changing aspect ratio process and how do you work it into your edit? Thanks, Mark. In today's world of video editing, sometimes post-production professionals find themselves needing a little more room. In the case of some situations, they use a technique called shade shifting, which employs multiple aspect ratios in a single film. In the case of Transformers to Last Night, it was used very well. As you can see here, here's the 185. Here's another aspect ratio changing, changing again, changing again. And you can see that the black bars keep changing area. See, there it is again, there it is again. So let's go ahead and teach you guys how to do this so you can employ multiple aspect ratios by using shape shifting. And we're going to do this in Adobe Premiere. Uh, as Mark was showing you before and let's take a look at some of the sample clip footage from Transformers last night uh, In this particular piece of footage they used a 190 uh, Aspect ratio in this particular clip they employed the 2.28 and the next clip they used the 2.00 and in the very last clip that we have you see that they used the 2.35 Okay, so there are four different aspect ratios that they've used in this to create this particular uh, uh, effect. So what we're going to do is go to some sample footage, and you're going to see here that I've employed a bunch of layers up here. What these are are actual mats, PNG mats that I created uh, in Photoshop, then brought them over, and now I've laid them out of my timeline. So this is the 4K scene. Uh, our aspect ratio right now is 3840 by 2160. And what you're going to see is we're going to start cropping those scenes to fit the, our needs. So for this one, we're using the 1.85 aspect ratio. For this one here, we are using the 2.35 industry standard. Uh, over here, we're using the 2.00. And as you go down a little bit farther, you're going to see that we're doing the 2.39 industry standard. Now, how would you make this preserve all of these particular standards uh, or these particular crops uh, in your final video. Well, the way you would do that is you would actually not employ the technique that Mark showed you how to do. Um, not that his was wrong. It was just that is the way you do it for a single output of aspect ratio. So you would go in here and you would click that up for a single output like Mark says and uh, make this whatever size you need it to be. And then obviously after you export it, you would be fine and you would have your black bars that fit wherever you need to. But in the case of doing this, where you're going to employ all these different aspect ratios in one timeline, what you're gonna to need to do is do it on export. So you will come up to file and you will go down to export and media. Or if you're using a Mac, you would go ahead and hit control M or I'm sorry, command M and then control M on your Windows machine. And the first thing you're going to do has come up to where it says source. You're going to crop it and you can either drag this down if you can get right on top of it where you need to the smallest aspect ratio of them all. So you want the least amount. Uh, if you have this aspect ratio going on in that timeline, which is a 185, and you try to crop it all the way down to here, well, you're gonna lose a lot of footage that the director wanted you to have. So we're gonna come back over here to our 185 which is the smallest one we got. We're going to turn this into 44 on our top. We're going to turn this bottom into 44. Okay. And then we're going to come down here to our video settings. We're going to uncheck the actual aspect ratio there to unlock it. We're going to go to 2076. We're going to hit enter. Then we're going to come back up here to output. 
and you're going to see that it's going to crop this. Your very last thing you're going to want to do is make sure you set this to entire sequence. Now when you export it, you will export all of those different aspect ratios that you needed, uh, that your director wanted so he could show more visual effects space, or perhaps you have comps from someone else or you're working with someone else's footage and you really need to show the room with the different aspect ratios. And what you're gonna get after you hit your export button and you get your final render down, you're going to get footage that looks just like this. Whoops. Let's go over here, footage that looks like this. And you'll see that right now we're at the 185. Now we're at the 235. And we're gonna crop back down to the 200. And it will jump up to the industry standard 239. That's how you use multiple aspect ratios or shape shifting in a single timeline in Adobe Premiere. Now back to you, Mark. Thanks so much, Dan, for that. That was really interesting. And let me know in the comments section below, were you even aware of this changing aspect ratio in films that you may have seen before? Let me know in the comments section below, because I promise we do get back to every single comment. So thanks for watching, and remember to check out the rest of the videos on our channel, because we've got a whole host of tutorials all about the cinematic look and how to edit better videos. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.